What's up, Buck Dougaldini in the garage here, and I got a question for you. Can you tell me real quick, what do you call one of these right here? No, no peeking, no cheating. I know, it's a heater. If you're, if you're south of the Mason-Dixon, this here is a heater, all right? But uh, for the rest of us, what, what do you call these? Jet heater, torpedo heater, diesel heater, multi-heater, ready heater. They got a million different names, and they're made by a million different companies. But I'm here to tell you, I want to let you in on a secret. These are all the same. Whether it's this little 55,000 BTU unit that I use to warm up my gel coat and fiberglass shop here, or the big half a million BTU jams that look like jet engines that they use to uh, warm up warehouses, they're all made the same. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through the definitive list of how to service, maintenance, inspect every single component in one of these jet heaters so that you can get them running, because I love these things. These things to me are like snow blowers. They're old world technology, for whatever reason it hasn't been touched, and you can still fix this entire thing with one of these. To the uninitiated, this is a six-in-one screwdriver. Why is it called a six-in-one? You got a big Phillips and a big flat, and a small Phillips and a small flat, that's four. And then for those that don't know, that's a quarter inch hex, and that's a five steenths hex. Now back in the day, before everyone was losing their 10 millimeter, Five steenths and quarter inch would get you pretty darn far. Now, on these ready heaters, I'm telling you, all of them, ready heater, doesn't matter the, the company, they're all, they're made by about one company, and then everybody else slaps their name on it. Ready is just a brand. Craftsman makes them. At work, we have some 105,000 BTU uh, by Dayton. They're all exactly the same. So grab yourself a six in one. If you don't have one of these in the house, you should get one anyway. This is a Lennox. Lennox invented the screwdriver, if you don't know. Looks a little something like this. There's no way you can see that, can you? Lennox. That guy right there. That's the original Lennox screwdriver right there. We've come a long way from this honking chunk of iron and wood to this beautiful little six. And anyway, get yourself one of these and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pop the top off this with the five steam side. Okay, see that? Look at that. Those fasteners fit right in there. Now, some of these will come with Phillips head, but a lot of them you're going to have to use a socket. And I'm telling you right now, this is a heck of a lot easier than tripping over a ratchet. Ta-da! And this is what they all look like inside. Every single one of them. Now here's how these things work. I'm gonna try to be as brief as I possibly can, super high level. There are plenty of in the weeds descriptions out there on the web. This right here is a nozzle using uh, air generated by this air pump and sent through this line here. It uses the Venturi effect to suck diesel or whatever kerosene up from the tank in the base and blow it out this nozzle. This is a literal spark plug. This one happens to be a champion. Some of them use a uh, two-prong igniter. They all have some ignition source right there. You got diesel atomized through this nozzle and then ignited with the sprayer. This guy down here is a photo cell or a CAD cell. What it literally does is it looks through this hole right here and it senses if there's flame. If there's not, it shuts the machine down. What that prevents is atomized fuel spraying continuously into an unignited chamber because you've still got this uh, spark plug sparking and this isn't igniting so the photocell shuts it down if it doesn't ignite within a certain amount of time or if it uh, dies in process of running. Now the only other component to know is this fan. This is uh, pushing air into this combustion chamber. Uh, that is where you get the air in your air fuel mixture and also what propels the heat forward. That's where you get the jet in the jet heater. So this pump this electric motor runs, it generates air pressure that it sends down this line into the tank, Venturi effect up into this nozzle. This fan is blowing forced air into the combustion chamber to uh, fuel the air fuel mixture. This is a spark plug. It does what spark plugs do. Some of them have igniters. Don't be fooled though. It's all the same thing. This is your CAD cell. It shuts it down if it needs to be shut down. That's it. They all just, that's how they all work from the biggest down to the smallest. Now, here are some of the issues you can have. First of all, everything can be dirty. If it won't turn on at all, or it'll turn on for a split second and kicks off, try your CAD cell, flat head side of your screwdriver. It's just a rubber boot that's held into this bracket. So pop it out, work it around these lines. I can tell that this has been maintenanced because the lines were not run in their OEM configuration. So I had to pop that line off, no big deal. All right, I know it's hard to see down in that photo cell. There's almost a look, little like 
kind of looks like a solar panel or something. Just wipe that off. Put a little alcohol on a shop rag, stick it down there, wipe it off, put this thing back in. Another issue people have had is their photo cell is not pointed at the hole into the combustion chamber. All right, so if it's, you have a situation where it won't even try to run, photo cell. But what if it's not the photo cell? All right, well, let's look at some of the other components in here. Spark plug, all right? I think most of us know how to diagnose a spark plug, pull the lead off, pop right out of there. Pop this guy out, and it's very obvious. Look at that thing. Now, I this is just from last season. That's one season, because I clean it at the beginning of every season. Yours might even look worse than that. And believe it or not, most of them that look this bad are still running, but they won't be forever. This is the kind of thing that lands these machines out on the curb. Nothing crazy, I'm using uh, starting fluid and a rag. Now, how about that nozzle? These go bad as well. Now, the symptoms of a bad spark plug is usually it'll just run for 30 seconds and then the photo cell will shut it down, all right? The symptoms of a bad nozzle can be much crazier. There's a couple different ways to get these out, but we're gonna pull the whole unit off. Let's get our motor out of the way. Another thing, everything in this casing is just riding on these rails here. Everything sits in and then it's locked in by the lid. So again, these things are super easy. Pick that up and get it out of the way. Just move it back. Make sure you're not putting stress on the wires. And we can get in here. This moves up as well. Now, there's many different designs to hold the nozzle in. On these small ones, it's just a bit of bent, you know, 18 gauge steel. Um, on the big gate ones we have at work, it's actually a cast aluminum piece, but it's all the same stuff. It's all the same nozzle. All right, we're gonna pull, get access to the nozzle, pull out a 5 8 wrench, and that's gonna let you pop this guy out. Now inside this nozzle housing is gonna be the brass nozzle. Uh, and then some of these have an O-ring, some of them have a spring that goes on the end, some of these the nozzle's really long. So they use a couple different sizes uh, of nozzle based on the size of the machine, but again, it all works the same way. You wanna get some brake lean, fire it that way, and then fire it that way. I don't know if you saw that, but as long as you can get a good blast out of each direction, make sure the face is cleaned off as well. Now the symptoms of a bad nozzle, it may spray for 30 seconds and then shut off because it's not actually moving fluid or what we just had at work. I was actually just working on it today. The machines would run fine. They'd start off burning clean. And then after about 10 minutes, they'd start smoking. And the longer you left them on, the more they'd smoke and when you turned them off you'd get this big puff of black smoke out the back and, and basically we couldn't use them what, what we do at work is we use them inside some closed tents and you can't have them smoking and everything everybody will fall out get a headache and we couldn't figure out exactly what the problem was it turned out the nozzle was dirty so it wasn't atomizing the fuel it was just sort of dripping it in there and it was actually accumulating and dripping down this nozzle kind of like that. And so the longer you'd have it on, the more the drip would start. And then when you turned it off, it, it would have residual fuel all around here that would kind of drip down into the combustion chamber. And I mean, you know what happens when you drop diesel or kerosene on a hot metal surface, just kind of got to smoke everywhere. So a bad nozzle will give you a lot of different symptoms. You can just buy replacements, but I don't know that I've ever seen, the only time I've ever seen a nozzle destroyed is when it ran dirty diesel through it, meaning there was particulates and it just gouged out the inside to the point where it was no longer moving the proper volumes. But for the most part, uh, just clean your nozzle out. All right, so that covers a lot of these uh, main components. Um, additionally, I mentioned the airlines. So you've got an airline uh, going between the pump down through to the tank and then you have the supply line coming from the tank either of those can be cracked a lot of times you'll see the supply line it actually cracks right here right around there you can buy for 20 bucks a pre-cut perfectly length one or just go down to your auto parts store and go to their hose line and just get something with the same id um and you know that's all that's all you'll need. All right, and I saved this bit of info for last because this is the bit of maintenance that everybody talks about online. 
if you see a video that says, get any ready heater working, that's the only thing they're gonna tell you. Which is why I wanted to make this video because I think a lot of people get frustrated with these because they try to set the air pressure and it doesn't work or they're not even able to get it to the right pressure and it just doesn't run the way they think it should. And they say, all right, well, I tried, it must be broken. Because everything in here is uh, serviceable, these heaters, most of them that I've seen, about 99 out of 100 that I've seen, give you all the information you could ever need to maintain it right here. And that's something you never see anymore. Manufacturers literally hide this information so that you can't maintenance your machines. That's what I love about these machines. They were designed to be maintenance. So let's take a look at this tag right here. They give you the directions on how to start. They give you some info on troubleshooting. And then here's everything you need. This is the model. This is an R55, Ready 55. Uh, it's a 55,000 BTU. The fuel tank capacity is five gallons. The pump pressure in PSI is 3.4. That information is there for you. Remember that number, 3.4. Uh, volts, Hertz, 120. Uh, amps, two amps. Uh, single phase. Uh, line fuse, yeah, there's a 10 amp fuse in here. So if the thing won't kick on at all, there is a 10 amp fuse in there that you can change. Let's, so that, that's really all the info you need. On some of these, they give you a bit more uh, info. They'll give you high and low readings. This doesn't have a high and low. Anyway, what, what am I talking about with this pressure? What's the big deal there? All right, friends, we're staring at the back. These all have a cover on the back that pops off. Different ways they pop off. This one you have to relieve a little pressure on the 5 16 nuts. Other ones just have little detent tabs. Anyway, the long and the short of it is this is what you're going to be looking at in some configuration on the back of yours. You're going to have a couple of ports and you're going to have an air filter. All right now, mine was missing the filter when I bought it, so I just jammed a piece of whatchamacallit in there and I choose to believe that that's doing just fine. But if yours isn't there, I recommend you put one in too. Uh, clean it out if you want to, but definitely make sure it is there. Um, because you will ruin the pump if you're just sucking up dust and dirt and debris from your shop the whole time. So what you're gonna wanna do is remove this plug here, all right? Usually the plug is on the left, and it's gonna be very obvious which one is the plug as you're pulling it out. This one's totally plug shape, and now it's run away on me. I love these winter's gauges. This is my personal one. I bought one exactly like it to use at work. I will leave a link down below. I think they have them on Slamazon. The point is you need a super low pressure gauge. This one's zero to 15 PSI, because what are we trying to measure? 3.4, remember? So we thread this bad boy in there. Some of the larger ones, or maybe just modern ones in general, come with gauges on the back. I personally don't trust them. I would get a good one like a winter's. You're gonna have to keep an eye on this gauge while adjusting this uh, valve right here. In will bring your uh, pressure down, out will bring your pressure up. So let's move this thing over here and I'll show you how we adjust this thing. All right, friends, here are a few final thoughts, uh, some in-between-the-lines tips and tricks that I've kind of learned over the years, because let me tell you, in my area, uh, around the middle of the winter, you'll see these things being given away for free, curb alert, 20 bucks, doesn't run. Uh, nothing will make you kick a piece of machinery out of the shop quicker than when it's the thing that was supposed to make it not frozen in the shop, and now it's frozen in the shop. Anyway, point is, if you figure out how to work on these, you buy them, when people throw them out in March for 20 bucks, you fix them up, maybe you clean up the paint, you sell for 100 bucks next fall. All right, so I've been dealing with these guys uh, pretty much my whole life, and I've learned a couple things. If it's running weird, producing a lot of smoke, your air pressure's running weird, but last time it was running fine, make sure your tank's not almost empty. There's no pump, fuel pump. In this it's it's literally using the venturi effect to blow air over a line and, and suck fuel up that way if the tank is low it'll start acting very funny i like to keep mine above half a tank all the time it just prevents that issue across the board now similarly if you're going to try to tune this thing and you get it where it says it should be the small ones are usually around three and a half the big ones uh go up to about five and a half some of the big ones are even more than that you got to read yours but most of them have that info on the little thing. Anyway, point is, say you get it to three and a half and it's smoking or it won't run, 
there's something to be said for just tune it to how the thing works. They do, they don't wear out in my opinion. They never go bad, but they do start to get loosey goosey. And what you can do to mitigate that is just tune it to wherever it needs to be. Screw the gauge. You know, go, uh, usually with the gauge, I recommend quarter of a turn at a time. Wait 10 seconds, see how it changes the machine, then make another quarter turn adjustment. If you're doing it, you know, by eye and ear, and smell, really, because you'll smell this thing um, if it's not running right, go an eighth of a turn. An eighth of a turn, wait 20 seconds. That make it better or worse? Better? Okay, another eighth of a turn in that direction. Oh, worse? Eighth of a turn back, eighth of a turn. Um, point is, they're real simple. So if you're having a problem with one of these, I hope this video helps you out. If it didn't, leave me a comment down in the squawk box. And maybe we can figure it out together. What do you say, bud? Uh, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Maybe even go check out my website, monkeywithatoolbox.com. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Please, man, I hope there's some other folks out there trying to keep these cool machines on the road, so to speak. And if you're not, if you've had it with it, well, hit me up. I'll come pick her up. See y'all next time.